Through this documentary, we get an insight into the first faltering steps in the modernization of Ireland. The names most associated in the public mind with this period are Whitaker and Lamas, but there is a third giant, Bill Walsh, and he appears briefly at the end of this documentary. Some years ago, shortly before he died, Walsh said to me he wouldn't like to be considered a hero of Irish design. That would be distasteful, he said, but Walsh was a hero. He it was who brought the Scandinavian design report to Ireland, which set the agenda for Irish design for decades to come. Walsh too established Kilkenny design workshops and brought it to Kilkenny. During his time there, that city was every bit as cosmopolitan as any other place on the island. Some of the designs we see in the workshop look a little dated to our eyes today, perhaps even overly craft-based. But the lasting, enduring legacy of KDW is that it set a benchmark for Irish design for the decades to follow. This story could begin in any Scandinavian country. It starts in Stockholm. Some years ago, the Irish Export Board set up a commission of experts from Scandinavian countries, small countries with big exports. The commission was to report on the state of industrial design in Ireland and on the findings of the commission, findings that were often unflattering and which were published. The board decided that if Ireland seriously intended to succeed in world markets, then the standard of design must be raised. So, the Kilkenny Design Workshops were started. In front of the design workshop in these old buildings is the exhibition shop. Visitors, and the average 200 daily, often want something to take away, and so the workshops buy back some of the products they've designed from the manufacturers. This silver teapot is part of a set. There's also a cream jug and sugar bowl which go with it. You can, of course, purchase any of the items by themselves. I think if you look at it, you'll appreciate the very fine craftsmanship in it. It is, of course, pure sterling silver, and is hand-wrought. It's got the hallmark on the bottom. This was once the stable yard of the Earls of Ormond. Now, stables and lofts and grooms' quarters have been turned over to the designers and prototype workers by the export board. Very little is actually manufactured here, but prototypes are made from the designs, and they're submitted to buyers and manufacturers. It's a question of designing the best possible products in the household range, having regard to usability, appearance, machining technique, and cost. A design that fails in any of these respects is not a good design. Sometimes special single jobs are commissioned, such as the colour styling and lettering design of the post office vans. This was done by Damien Harrington, who specialises in packaging. Um. This is um, a sample of some of the Kilkenny packaging, which is cut, scored, and creased, all on the same side. Um, this naturally says, brings the cost down, and um, it's either packed in Kilkenny here, or it goes out flat to the various retailers. This is a sample, it's actually the final draft of the new national parks and monument symbol. Another Kilkenny interest is wood turning. John Shield, who was attracted to this, left a banking career to be trained by the Kilkenny workshops and sent abroad for further study. Now he's set up his own industry. 
It works mainly to Kilkenny designs, turning out wooden platters, salad bowls, and tobacco boxes. His products go mostly to America, some to England. Um, shortly, we hope to Germany and South Africa. Really? Does it keep you busy then? More than busy. We, More than? We just can't make enough because we're making here by hand. Well, what are you going to do then? Expand? We have to expand. We're building a new factory. We're bringing in semi automatic machinery and more workers. Then we hope to be able to keep our customers happy. The complete tobacco box, with its marble stopper, is the union of two new industries operating in connection with a limestone quarry. The quarry belongs to Keenan Brothers, a firm of structural engineers. And they supply limestone after polishing it for windowsills, monuments, floors, decoration, and many other purposes. The black limestone of Kilkenny, with its fossil traces, is famous. Many old houses have chimney pieces made of it. But these are the big slabs. Now the smaller pieces are being turned to use. Kilkenny Marblecraft, formed to use them, was given ideas by the design workshops. And out of the small pieces, they make bowls and ashtrays in the native stone. Jim Harding, the director of the firm, has a great love for working in stone and he takes part in this work himself. The final product combines the polished and the raw limestone. Surroundings have influenced design directly, but how much have the workshops influenced their surroundings? The city has its share of ugliness below great splendor. Tourists come to visit Kilkenny because of its historic interest. They also visit the design workshops and at least carry away an impression of Irish goods. They visit places like the splendidly restored Roth House, once a merchant's dwelling, a political meeting place, many other things. The inn of the famous witch, Dame Alice Kittler, has become an inn again. When the fathers of Kilkenny built the Tholsal, they put a weather vane on top of it to tell how the wind stood outside the walls. They put up a clock with faces to be seen all round the town, and they set the town's arms in the wall below it. Now Kilkenny's crest travels the world on beer mugs. This transfer will appear on a dinner set. Could it have been inspired by this marvellous fanlight in Kilkenny College? Is it too much to suppose that this 12th century arch may have engaged the subconscious of a designer and been stylized in the workshops like this? Well, I like the shape of the cup. Yes, it's awfully nice, isn't it? Very pretty. Sweet little girl. Lovely. What's that for? This is the large size casserole. This is a new range, our oven to tableware range, which has been produced for one of our leading Irish manufacturers. A special feature of this range is the handle on the casserole, which has been designed to stand away from the body, so that when hot and you take it from the oven, the handle cools quite quickly, but the body of the casserole remains hot. That went to the manufacturer from this ceramics department. A tableware design called Irish Lace has gone to another. The designer's idea was brought to strict working terms by the draftsman. The decoration will eventually become a transfer. The design appears in the round for the first time and Mr. Hopkinson works on it slowly and carefully. The handle will fit like this, exactly as designed. Or maybe it won't. Mm -hmm. 
The tea break fills the staff room twice a day. Everyone meets here. It's one of the things about Kilkenny Design Workshops. Designers and the prototype workers seem to be very close together. And from providing tea like this, up to arranging a weekend expedition to the Salty Islands, or a Shannon cruise, or a fancy dress party, the staff organize everything themselves without depending on the management. It seems to work admirably. The manager is here. He's talking to a textile printer who's been on a course in Germany. Where were the students from? Uh, all over the world. There was Chile, Spain, Peru, Germans themselves, yes, and Chinese. How long did the course last? Uh, 14 days inclusive. Yes. You were on textile chemicals now? Uh, yes, textile dye stuff. I studied pigments for glass cloth making. And yes. they also have a reactive range for silk, silk and wool. I see. And do they, is the class concerned with chemicals for other... Des Burns practice is confined to physical culture. He is, in fact, a silversmith, and he represented Ireland three times internationally as a juvenile boxer. Good night, John. Good night. Don't be late in the morning. I won't. See you in the morning. In the morning. Morning in the textile printing shop, where Harold Bailey works with two assistants. The designs are printed through silk screens onto linen. These are intended as tea cloths, but many people think they're too good for that, and they use them as wall hangings. Those designs are treatments of an Irish illuminated manuscript. New ones are frequently made. When the next colour is added, the round of printing begins again. This design is by Oshin Kelly. Kelly is an all-round man. He works in stone, in paint, in metal sculpture, large subjects in wrought iron, and figures in wood, like this decorative idea. Oh, this is a scorpion. Uh, scorpion, is one of the signs of the zodiac? One of the signs of the zodiac, yes. You're going to make a complete set? Yes, yes. And what will its future be? Will it be set on a table or, or used as separate pieces of decoration? No, I'm going to assemble the whole uh, 12 of them in... Uh, uh, as the, on the surface of a table. A table top coast. table. Well, now, this is uh, really a handcraft. It'll be, I presume, it'll be prototyped here in Kilkenny. And yes. will it then be offered to um, a manufacturer? Yes, yes. I'm going to make one copy or a few copies of various uh, permutations on these uh, five veneers. And then I'll. Uh, uh, I can unsimplify it and then offer it to a manufacturer. Among Kilkenny design products produced by many firms, the outstanding success is in textiles. In its fourth year of operation, Kilkenny design textiles were bringing in £350,000 a year. 15, 10. The prototypes are made on these hand looms. 15, 10. Uh, when do you expect to have this uh, range ready? About midday tomorrow. Excellent. That's fine. Thank you. One of the prototypes from this hand loom in Kilkenny became a massive order for the furnishing of the new London Airport Lounge on the instructions of Conran Contract Furnishings carried out in Wood's Sinkfield Mills in Burr, and also here in the Port Glacier Worsted Mills.
When the 200 workers in this factory leave for lunch, much the same thing is happening in Kilkenny. But in Kilkenny, there are people who go back to something different once a week. The apprentice silversmiths, employed in the design workshops and elsewhere, in what is becoming a city of silversmiths. The apprentices are links with an earlier Kilkenny. As in old days, they're still indentured to their masters to serve their time. But they also get instruction outside the workshops once a week in the technical school. A diamond or a rock crystal, all the classes. Yeah? And for a crystal. Their teacher is Rudolf Heltzel a silversmith who works in association with the design workshops. Now I see Messrs Kelly and Knox already know so much I can afford to miss half the lesson. Is that true? Yeah, that's all we got. Uh, Martin. Opus. Opus. And all the less expensive stones like rhodonite, rhodochrosite and so on, amazonite. Hmm? So now when people started to collect stones, what do you think they did? Oh, which stones, when they discovered stones, they found The practical them. part of their training is done in the design workshops. Franz Josef Bette is the goldsmiths and silversmiths workmaster, a title that's another link with the past. He's also the designer in this area. He was trained in Dusseldorf and worked in Zurich before coming here. In 1968, he won the De Beers Diamond International Award for a head ornament of gold and diamonds made here. Franz Peter's assistant is Markus Huber from Switzerland. Advisory panel. The advisory panel is made up of artists, an architect, manufacturers and housewives, with the director of the Arts Council, Father O'Sullivan. The approval of this panel is essential, but a design is useless unless it also has the approval of the manufacturer. The design must be more than a thing on paper. It must make commercial and technical sense to the people at, for example, Robert Usher's mills in Drogheda. Yes. Yes. Sorry, we use a colored weft. Mm. No, you don't use a 14-inch weft, do you? I use 14-inch weft. 220 inch. 225. Yes. In County Kerry, the mill-owning family of Edie manufactured conventional products but now they've undertaken Kilkenny designs. They have graded us up a long way in design, in colour, and in quality, that we're now, since we've got in with Kilkenny for the last three years, 
we're selling much more abroad, and any extension of our sales abroad is based on Kilkenny. That's to say, you've got into international markets. Yes, we're selling Kilkenny into Canada and USA mostly, and England, Great Britain, and uh, any things they have designed for us, we found readily acceptable abroad. Do you think it's going to mean an extension of the mill here and employment? Where we see it at the moment here, with the projects that are on and the projects that are coming up, that within 12 to 18 months we have no hope of handling them unless we do something more to get our production up. A model of the Kilkenny display shop used in exhibitions, trade fairs, and shops as far away as the permanent Kilkenny premises in San Francisco. The chairman of the Kilkenny Design Workshops is William Walsh. Ireland produces over 50 million pounds worth of house and office furnishings of various sorts each year, and a great deal of this is exported. And it's largely with these things that a country's reputation for good or bad design is concerned. Nobody really wants to buy anything from a country that is sloppy or slapdash about its design. The Danes are very well aware that their good, well-designed, well-made furniture is a great help in selling their agricultural produce, their butter. And I have no doubt that Irish tweed, Irish glass, Irish silver is a help to us in the sales of our agricultural produce abroad too. So these, for these reasons, we, we concentrate uh, very heavily here on housewares. Now, I don't mean craft items. I think everything that's done in the workshops, with the possible exception of some silver, is designed for quantity production, multiple production. There are over 800 towns and villages throughout Ireland with a population of under 1,500. Nearly all of them would greatly benefit from a manufacturing plant that would profitably employ, say, 10, 20, or up to 50 people on something that they would take a pride in making. And there is nothing to prevent a small concern being thoroughly efficient and competitive. These old buildings that hold the design workshops once were stables, coach houses, and grain stores. People look down on the bustle of wheelwrights and blacksmiths from here. But these old buildings in the 18th century past did nothing for the general good of the country. Now they do. These old roofs cover what seems to be a happy place. These old cobblestones are young again. Into these old walls was built an ancient enigmatic face. Its origins are lost. Now they hold the young. Youth and experience work together inside these old walls and something good is advanced. Every time the clock strikes.